Summer school is a whole nother gig. The beauty of that is there are no report cards, there are no state assessments. It's the pure art of teaching. We've been teaching a summer engineering camp. One of the goals is to try and get the kids interested in math and science and engineering activities, trying to get the kids to work as a team where they have to solve problems in a unique way. And we also try to get them to think how they can make things better. So we give them uh, some problems where they see a solution, but they're told that they can make it better. And we get some pretty unique ideas. It's been really fun. The camp was about engineering and building stuff. We built a catapult, which we got to do ourselves. And we got to build a plane, a glider called Delta Dart. I've learned many parts for the robot and like I've learned how to assemble it, how it can work. And the kids that take the summer program are, are really excited about it. They have a good time. They're very enthusiastic and so that's a lot of fun. We built this all um, by ourselves as a team. We built the frame first. There's the motors and so the motors control the wheels. Each motor controls a gear which turns the other gear which turns the wheel. STEM is really fun because I love like engineering and everything, so it was pretty fun. I loved the week here. Here at Plano East this summer, we hosted the Star Power Middle School Theater Camp, which is a camp that we offer every year for uh, incoming sixth graders, seventh graders, and eighth graders. And students get together for eight days, classes in a variety of different uh, theatrical subjects, basic acting, improvisation, tech work, and simultaneously, they work on separate productions which they present for the community at the end of the week. So they're really working at a very swift pace. It's fairly impressive that they're able to do this and that our guest directors can pull this off. This is going to make your mouth work so hard that when we take the pencils out, suddenly words just become clearer and easier. Shit is the room! And you guys, not after her time, or her take on Citizens of Rome! We'll be filming the D.W. DeWitt production of Exit Ominous. We're having high school kids from across the district who've had great experiences at Star Power and Center Station in the past, and they show up and they volunteer and they help with all of the tech. So it's really uh, a group effort from across the district, all of our teachers and uh, many of our alums and a lot of our current students. Very, very proud of you for still going forward and doing it no matter what happens. We skipped from page 31 to 46. The fun thing about this week is interacting with the puppets, interact with other characters in your story, and become your character. And it yeah. Kind of hard because he moves like a lot, and I have to stay with him. Oh, get a rock star! I've definitely made new friends and I've learned a lot about improv, dance, finding the deeper meaning to my character. They didn't say a word. What was it that you could tell there was that wall between them? Their eyes. Their eyes. What about their eyes? One of the great things about the Star Power Camp is that the students come from across the entire school district. They come and spend nine, ten hour days working on theater for eight consecutive days and it's really a privilege that we're able to offer this camp for them. And that's something that we hope will pay uh, dividends when the kids return to their theater programs at their home schools. Reading is basically like TV, but it's going on in your mind. Every summer for the past eight summers, I have been teaching six summer school, and I teach first and second graders, a course called Caldecott, where we explore the Caldecott winning children's books and focus on the literature and uh, the illustrations. I select 15 books 
that we focus on during the course of our summer school program. We've read Blossom, Jumanji, Where the Wild Things Are, The Adventures of Beagle, Why Mosquitoes Bust in People's Ears, So You Want to Be President. Getting children to be excited about quality literature and especially the illustrations and learning about great artists, what motivates them and inspires them. I will typically read them the book, activate their thinking about it, and then we do a craft activity that ties into the theme of the book or the setting of the book. Paul the Cut Cafe, we all have to find a book and then we find a food related to it and we bring it and we feast. I love to get them involved, make them feel safe and welcoming, sharing their ideas and their thinking in class. And they're engaged with children from other schools that they don't normally interact with. That's a great way um, for them to see learning um, in a different way, in a different campus. It is a way for me to really recharge my batteries, for me to get started for another school year back on my home campus. I love it. It's nice to be surrounded by people who love art. I learned how to make a stop motion video because um, I'd never done it before and it was like a new experience for me. The teachers were really nice and if you had a question they would like help you and they'd make your art better than you could do on your own. We did the Rainbow Rampage. It's a stop motion about Skittles and M&Ms and they were fighting over who's more delicious. It was fun, it was lengthy, but it was fun. I feel like I learned lots of different techniques for sculpting and drawing and painting and digital art. Headshot, literally. <laughs> My favorite thing to work on was definitely the sculptures and the drawing by hand. That was really fun. You can close your eyes to the things you, you don't want to see, but you can't close your heart to the things you don't want to feel. <laughs> Mine didn't turn out how I wanted it to, but it still turned out fine. Venture outside your comfort zone and the rewards are worth it.